Okay, guys, so now that we have learned ab about or he, we have um, revisited the GI tract physiology, very, very simple, okay, nothing like uh, our equine nutrition class or even animal nutrition class or equine uh, physiology class or animal physiology class covers, okay, it's very, very um, low level of an intro. Uh, but it's what we need to understand more or less to continue with learning the diseases, okay? So now we're going to talk about this disease that is called equine rotavirus, okay? Come back. Equine rotavirus, as the name says, is a virus, okay? And it causes diarrhea in foals. So it's the most common cause of foal enteritis, okay? Enteritis means the inflammation or diarrhea of the GI tract. This is important, guys. The virus only affects foals, okay? Only affects foals. Now, some farms have rotavirus more often than other farms, but no natural reservoir has been identified. The mares do not shed the virus. So it's not like the mares are passing the disease to their foals. Now, mares can pass other GI tract diseases such as E. coli or salmonella to the foals via even the other. If the mare has, uh, if the mare has diarrhea and from the back of her leg, if the udder gets contaminated and the foals go and uh, drink milk, um, they can actually have, you know, whatever bacteria is causing the disease in the mares too. But this, in this particular case, the mares do not shed the virus. So foals are affected and mares don't shed the virus. Nobody knows what the reservoir, the reservoir, as you guys remember, is what maintains the disease, okay, in nature. Um, with foals, when they have diarrhea, large concentrations of viruses are shed into the environment and the virus can remain viable in the environment for as long as nine months which means what, in next year, during the next fall crop, the virus may or may not contaminate the next foals. If this is like a late fall, such as being born in May, if the virus is still outside in the environment, it could, okay, create an outbreak next year. But also, when the first foal has the disease, if he is not taken out of that field, we can actually have, because as you guys know, we keep foals, like groups of mares and foals together. So maybe six, seven, eight mares in the same field with their foals. And if one gets sick, it can easily pass to the next foal. Uh, it is transmitted by the fecal oral route. So any GI tract disease is transmitted by the fecal oral route, meaning what? Feces made their way into the mouth, okay? That's what fecal oral means. Uh, and it is going to be through contaminated feces or fomite. So like I said, diarrhea outside in the environment, foals are also outside. They lick each other, they play with each other, they eat grass, um, and they can get sick that way. It's highly contagious. The incubation period is super short, okay? Once a foal has it, they can actually pass to the next foal super, super easy. And that's why we have fields that um, sometimes are going to... Um, have most of the foals or all the foals uh, having diarrhea. Close to 100% of brood mares are going to be positive, okay? They're going to have antibodies, so they're seropositive, meaning they have antibodies for the disease in their blood, okay? So that means that they have been in contact with the virus. They don't shed the virus, but they have been in contact with the virus or they were vaccinated against it and they have formed an immune defense against it. Age of the foals can be as young as two days of age and as old as uh, five, six months of age, okay? The duration of the diarrhea is one to nine days, and the virus can continue to shed even after the diarrhea has ceased. Uh, so this here is important because foals can be super young uh, and have the disease, two to 155 days of age. Uh, as you guys can... Uh, Think about this, these foals here are still nursing on their mares. Uh, they're gonna be sick for about a week to 10 days. And with supportive care, meaning if you are able to maintain this foal hydrated without a fever, um, 
eating food, drinking milk, it is possible to maintain this for a life, okay? So rotavirus has very low mortality, but has high morbidity. So mortality is how many horses die that have the disease. High morbidity is how, and it's low, is how many horses in a population will, go, will get sick with the disease. So it's high. Um, after recovery, foals generally don't get infected again with rotavirus. Why is that, guys? There's a couple of reasons. Number one, they will create what? An immunity, immunity against the disease, right? And when, remember when we drew the graph about um, how antibodies happen? So when they have the disease, they're going to create antibodies against it and, the, and then the antibodies wane away, okay? So what happens then? When these antibodies are low, what happened to the foals? They're not foals anymore, okay? They have become maybe yearlings and this disease only affects foals, doesn't affect older animals. So therefore, they create an immunity against it and then later on, it only affects them once, okay? Not because they are not gonna get in contact with the rotavirus again, but because after they create immunity, it doesn't affect them anymore. Uh, the other thing too that is important is that this is one of the diseases that the mares are going to be the ones to be vaccinated, okay? So the mare can have enough antibodies passed on her colostrum to be able to protect these foals before they get sick. What is the pathogenesis for this disease? So it's going to destroy the, the, the villi and the uh, microvilli, so they're going to blunt. Remember I talked about in the intro uh, about blunting the villi, and we're going to have hyperosmotic solution in the intestine, malabsorption, so things are not being absorbed, maldigestion, things are not being digested, and high influx of water into the intestinal lumen, okay, which means what? Overwhelming the system, and then water is not going to be able to be reabsorbed again. Everything is just sick and inflamed, and we're going to have a lot of you know diarrhea. It can be paste or can be watery. The clinical signs are going to be lethargy. Fo is just sick. He doesn't feel good. Decrease suckling, diarrhea, maybe projectile diarrhea. He's going to depend on the viral load of this fo. Fever may or may not be present. One thing that is interesting is that if at some foes, some animals don't even present with fever until they get dehydrated. When they get to the point that they are dehydrated, they actually can have fever even if it's not 100% from the disease, but it's hard to, to know if it's fever for the disease or dehydration. But I wanna say that dehydration can also lead to fever, okay? So it's important to uh, take care of the dehydration of this foal. So this is the little foal with, how do you know if a foal has diarrhea? As you can see, his little tail is full of uh, diarrhea, his little buttocks full of diarrhea and uh, there's gonna be diarrhea everywhere, okay? And wherever he is. Um, diagnosis, we can do fecal samples. So there is commercial kits that you just get some fecal samples and you have the results really quickly. Uh, it's very difficult to grow in cell culture. So the virus isolation is a little bit unreliable, but the age of the foal is very telling. Uh, serology is also unreliable because serology is to measure the antibodies in the false serum. And if he, ha if he has a disease, that's probably because the mare didn't build up a good Im uh, immune system against it to start with, or you didn't vaccinate the mare to start with. Uh, and obviously it takes two weeks for anybody to produce antibodies. And in two weeks, the foal already doesn't have the disease anymore because the disease clears up in about 10 days, less than 10 days, okay? Um, so some of the kits, sometimes they have a false negative and just one negative test does not rule out uh, rotavirus. So you're gonna have to have three negative tests to rule out rotavirus with also the age of the foal, et cetera. There are other diseases that cause um, diarrhea in foals and, and some of them are more problematic than others, more serious, such as Salmonella, Clostridium, and then parasites also can be a problem in foals. How do we treat these little guys? Okay, so mortality is very low if well treated. IV fluids, that's important. So this is a foal that to be able to keep him alive, maybe you have to take him to the clinic 
or if you're able to do it um, in the farm, it's um, important, okay? A lot of the times, uh, for example here, if foals start getting born in January, it's impossible to, keep, to give IV fluids um, on the farm because if it's below 32 degrees, guess what? The bag of the IV fluids is going to freeze. So that becomes a problem. So that foal needs to go to the hospital. Pepto-Bismol. Pepto-Bismol is good because it actually absorbs uh, some of the toxins that other bacteria, because when there is diarrhea, bacteria just create a havoc also. So it's not just the viral diarrhea uh, or the viral load, but other bacteria become opportunistic and they can cause uh, a, a more problematic problem, such as being uh, absorbed into the system because all the villi, everything's just sloughed off and, and inside the lumen of the intestine. So Pepto-Bismol is good. It also creates um, a protection in the stomach of these foals. Foals are super, super quick to uh, develop gastric ulcers as well. So you just want to protect their little stomachs and GI tract. Mineral oil also coats the stomach and GI tract. Activated charcoal, if you guys know, uh, it just binds to toxins. Uh, so that is important too. So all these bacteria and these toxins do not get um, into the blood circulation, into the foal. May need antibiotics. So this is going to depend if the foal is getting sicker and sicker and you, you know, are not being able to maintain him well with just say benamine and uh, hydration. So you may need to uh, give antibiotics. It's going to depend as a case by case. Uh, benamine for pain and for fever, omeprazole to prevent gastric ulcer. So this is something, you know, to talk to the vet. Also clean and dry stalls. You need to bring these foals inside so you don't contaminate the pasture. Even if everybody in the pasture is sick with diarrhea, you just don't want to contaminate the pasture with overload and overloaded with amounts of viruses. So then the next year foal crop, um, is not going to you know, be affected by this. Uh, diaper rash creams, so what's the name of the desitin? You can put on their little butts and also you can put the aluminum spray, also works for diaper rash. So here you see a little photo of the foe with, I think this is the aluminum spray. It may also be the desitin, but this just, you know, he has a little IV going for him and he's, in this case, is drinking a little water. So it's just important. And like, remember I said, I talked about center block as opposed, and this is painted center block, which is so good because viruses and bacteria. So this is an isolation in a hospital, viruses and bacteria. It's very, very easy to disinfect a stall like this. Okay. Um, as opposed to wood or as opposed to just center block that is not painted. Um, to disinfect, rotaviruses are stable in a, are you know in a acidic pH and they are um, so paraquat is not really good and bleach they're resistant to bleach uh, formalin can inactivate the virus your veterinarian is going to be the one to tell you how exactly you should uh, disinfect the place but they have products uh, commercial products in equine hospitals that they use how do we prevent this disease? Remember I said that mares don't get the disease and they don't shed the virus, but they, it's important to heavily vaccinate these mares so, they, uh, so the foals will drink the colostrum, okay? So we're gonna vaccinate these mares at eight, nine, and 10 months of pregnancy. And then they're gonna foal obviously at 11 months of pregnancy. And then the foal is going to drink the colostrum. So it's important uh, that this foal drinks the colostrum, it stands within two hours and drinks this colostrum as quickly as possible. And then obviously cleanliness, um, do not spread manure or muck of affected animals to pasture, even if you can, um, if you're going to compost the manure, it's still not advisable to spread that one. You can actually uh, burn that manure if possible or remove from the property. Um, and then you can compost the manure, but I wouldn't spread it. I would remove it, okay? So it is not, uh, so to prevent any way, shape or form of these viruses affecting the next full crop uh, in that pasture, okay? Uh, composting increases the temperature 
a lot and probably deactivates the virus, but you can compost and then use that for something else as opposed to spreading. Uh, that's how I feel about that. Um, other causes, so we have to do differential diagnosis and these are other causes of diarrhea that uh, happen in foals as well. Like I said, Clostridium, if you guys remember, we talked about tetanus and I don't know why my pen keeps doing this little guy, see? Let's see. Uh, remember, we talked about, that's weird. Clostridium, Clostridium is deadly, okay? It can cause hemorrhagic diarrhea in these foals that they can actually kill. So it's more deadly than uh, rotavirus. Salmonella, bacteria, coronavirus, oh my gosh. Coronavirus, but not the COVID-19. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking about coronavirus that affects horses and cause diarrhea. In adult horses, apparently coronavirus may cause diarrhea, but also increases fever, high fever, and colic signs, okay? Uh, Lawsonia, it's another one. We're going to talk about that uh, in another class. There is cryptosporidium, and there is also parasite cases that can cause diarrhea in foals, okay? So this is the second lecture, and uh, one is the intro to, to the GI tract, and this is rotavirus. And there is, you know, you need to remember that rotavirus, number one is a virus. Number two, only causes diarrhea in foals. Number three, you only vaccinate the mares, the pregnant mares at eight, nine, and 10 months of pregnancy. Sounds good. We'll see you later.